Hi, I'm in uh, a Vauxhall Vivaro that I just bought uh, yesterday. Uh, it's spares a repair because it's um, it's in it's in limp mode and it's kicking loads of black smoke out of the exhaust. Um, and the, the person I bought it off says it's something to do with the um, the EGR valve. Um, so I got it cheap. I'm going to see if I can get it running. It's quite old. It's 2005. Uh, it's a 2.5 litre diesel Vivaro. It's done 100,000 miles, so it's not done many miles. Um, so hopefully, if I can get it fixed, it'll be a good, good van. I'm hoping to sort of turn it into a bit of a camper van type thing. Um, but we'll see how I get on. Um, so I've got my Xtool D7 plugged in. Um, I've done a, a full system scan on it, and it's showing up. Um, like P1400 code there, cold start emission reduction control system. So I think I've done a bit of googling, and that looks like it is related to the EGR. Um, so I think the owner was uh, being genuine with me. I think it is literally, literally, well, could <laughs> hopefully just the EGR valve needs cleaning or replacing. Um, I'm concerned it might be the turbo, but fingers crossed it's just the the EGR and it won't get too expensive um, but I got it cheap so even if it does, does turn out to be a turbo it's probably not the end of the world um, so I'm just gonna start the engine and see if I can see some live data for that EGR and see if it's doing anything at all um, so I'm just gonna go into engine Diagnostic the engine module here into the live data. Um, looking for some EGR type um, parameters. Uh, oh, here we go. So, EGR position command. EGR position command and EGR position feedback. So that that could be helpful. Let's have a look at those in graphs. Right, I'll start the engine. So the position command twitched a bit. I think I haven't seen anything. Oh, hang on. Let me rev it. Right, so it's it's trying to when I rev it, it's trying to adjust the EGR position, but the position feedback doesn't seem to be moving at all. Stuck at 1.82 volts. So it looks like it's just stuck. Um, so hopefully it's just coked up with carbon and stuff. So if I can clean that up then hopefully I can get that moving again. If not, I'll have to replace it. Uh, it's a bit awkward on this engine, but I'll um, I'll try that and I'll get back to you with the, the results. It's a little bit tight to get down there on the 2.5 TDI. I think it's easier on the 1.9, but um, I've taken it out and you can see it's kind of held, it's being held open slightly by this lump of, I don't know, uh, carbon or something like that. So I'm going to try and get that out. I mean, it's it's pretty clean. I think someone's cleaned it. I'm wondering if someone's been here before and cleaned it up. And maybe it is the turbo that's um, causing the issue. I don't know. But anyway, this, this doesn't seem to be working. Um, so... It's being held open. Um, it doesn't look like the carbon's going to stop it moving electrically, so maybe it's broken, um, and it's also being held open, so it's like compounding the issue. So I think I'll probably end up buying another EGR. I don't know. I'll give it a clean up, see if I can get it freed. Maybe it is sticky. I'll see if I can free it up. Might stick it in and give it a quick try before I fork out. I think it's. Hundred pounds or so for a decent EGR. 
decent quality one. Um, I'll let you know what I decide to do. Right, I've cleaned up this EGR uh, as best I can with what I've got here. I haven't got a toothbrush or anything to give it a good scrub, but uh, I've cleared that little blockage on the, the seat there. Um, I'll just see if I can show you how, how free it is now. Um, so I've plugged it into the van and I tried to look at live data with the engine not running, just, just with it plugged in and um, just to see if it would show any sort of position indication but it doesn't seem to show position indication unless the engine's running and I don't want to run the engine with the um, EGR out uh, really um, so I'm going to put it back in and um, just maybe do it up with one or two bolts because one of them's really awkward, the bottom one uh, and then hopefully Fingers crossed it works, but I'm a bit sort of sceptical. Um, I'll just show you where it lives in the van. Uh, let me just grab a torch. Uh, so we're in the engine bay here, down the front of the engine. three 10 mil bolts so it's a bit tight the access is a bit tricky especially for the bottom bolt um, but with a, a, a quarter drive ratchet handle and a, an extension managed to get in there uh, so I'm gonna plug it back in and um, start the engine well, fit it loosely or fit it in there with just a, a bolt or two um, plug it all back in and then try and start the engine and fingers crossed I fixed it but uh, we'll see Hi, uh, I'm back at the van um, after a, a few weeks away. Um, basically, just before I left, I did a bit of testing on uh, the old EGR valve. Um, this is the old one. I bought a new one ready to go because I found that this old one was um, was not working properly. Uh, basically, I did a bit of investigation on a bit of um, swatting up on YouTube and um, on Scanner Dana's channel and Mechanic Matt. They've got some really good videos. I'll link them into this video. Um, a good way of, det of testing these. Um, basically, I've got the new one plugged in here. So the plug, I don't know if you can see very well, but the plug has five five cables going to it and uh, two two fat ones um, so one and five there two fat ones and three skinny ones along the top um, so basically the three skinny ones are to do with um, sort of position sensing and then the two fat ones one is a permanent um, 12 volts and the other one is a, like a switched switched ground um, so there's a way of testing these um, basically basically if you apply um, a ground via what I've got is a like a power probe type thing here so I can apply a ground through that or you can apply it through a test light from the negative on the battery and basically if you apply a ground to um, to that one then the um, you should get the EGR moving nice and positively. Uh, so I'll do it now. Um, I'll just show you how to work out which which is the live and which is the switched ground. So um, bear with me a sec, I just need to disconnect the plug. Alright, so I'm back probed into one of the fat wires here and I've got the ignition on and I'm showing battery voltage battery's a bit low on this van but I'm showing a, a solid battery voltage on that pin so I know that that's the um, the permanent 12 volt supply that's the power uh, and then if I back probe into the other fat one uh, we're showing like 3.8 volts there. Um, I think if it basically if it's less than if it's 
kind of I don't know why exactly I've got 3.8 volts there I I'm not sure if I should have zero volts um, I don't know if it's just kind of residual kind of voltage from somewhere but that is the switched if as it's not battery voltage that is the the switched um, ground so um, that's how you can work out which of the fat wires is the power and which is the, the switched ground. Uh, so I'm just going to plug it back into the, the EGR valve. All right, so this is the brand new one, um, plugged in now. The ignition's still on. So I'm back probing into that, um, that switched ground. I don't know if I've got a good connection there. Okay, so I think the, the van is putting in like a pulsating voltage through that. Um, right, so basically, I'm going to, I'm just going to put in a ground here now with my test, um, my power probe. Um, I like, like I was saying before, you can um, use a test light hooked up to uh, battery negative um, so here we go and we sh we're expecting to see that valve like clunk so let's do that oh. so when I prop this switch down I should get the screen should turn green and we should get the EGR valve kind of clunking there we go so that's making a positive clunking sound which basically the other one, when you put it onto the old valve, is virtually dead. I did, before I went away, it was kind of creeping really slowly, um, but I've plugged, I've done it today, and it's not moving at all, it's just completely dead. So um, that, is, that is how I've confirmed that I have got a, a bad EGR valve, so I'm gonna put a new one in, and, um, and that should fix the fault, hopefully. Uh, right, I've changed the uh, the EGR valve, put the new one in. Um, I've taken it out for a test drive. I changed the oil as, as well at the same time. Um, and it's driving really nicely, actually. Um, yeah, there's no black smoke coming out of the exhaust. Um, the exhaust. Yeah, hardly any smoke at all, actually. Um, yeah, so I think, yeah, the turbo sounds good as well. The, I was a bit concerned about the turbo, but the turbo is, sort of sounds like it's spooling up nicely and, um, yeah, so basically I think it's fixed. So I'm really pleased about that. I'm just going to, um, I just powered up the, my scan tool. Um, I'll just do a system scan, see if that fault code's gone. Um, okay. Um, I'll put it into a report, there we go. So, BCM, um, yeah, we've still got that 14, P1400. Um, which is weird. We've got no engine light on the dash at all, so. I don't know. There's this P1000 alternative fuel mis engine misfire detected. But it, it runs smoothly, the engine, there's no, I can't, I can't feel any misfires at all, so. I'm gonna ignore those um, oh, I could try clearing them see if they come back that's a BCM yeah still got that P1400 cold start emission reduction control system um, but it all works fine so that's a bit strange um, I'm just going to go into live data just 
check that the EGR valve is motoring around okay um, so we're in the engine module EGR position command, EGR position uh, feedback. Um, so let's put those in a put those in a graph. Okay. So we've got position command forty odd percent. That seems to be working fine. Um, yeah, because when I with the old valve, I was getting no position feedback. The, basically, the valve was not moving at all. I don't think, um, which is interesting. So, pretty sure it's fixed, and um, I don't know what that that P fourteen hundred code is. I'll do a bit more digging, but as far as I'm concerned, there's no engine light on, so. I'm going to call that a fix. Um, it's not going into limp mode. It's when I first got this van, it was it would barely drive. Um, I think because that AGR valve was stuck open with a bit of a bit of carbon or something, it was um, letting in too much air or too much exhaust gases into the um, to the engine, and it was it had no power at all. But now it's really pulling quite nicely. Um, so. I'm gonna call that a fix, and uh, I've got the handbrake. I've got my. I've just replaced the handbrake cable, so I think it's pretty much ready for an MOT. And then once that's done, I'll sort of start looking at converting it into a bit of a camper van. I think for the summer. So um, nice little project. Um, but thanks very much for watching, and um, yeah, give us a give us a like if it's been useful um, to you at all. Okay, thanks very much. Bye. Um, just one more thing, uh, this is the part number of the EGR valve I put in, it's Pier, I think it was a Pierberg, yeah Pierberg, so that's the details for it. This is for the 2.5 um, litre Vivaro, probably the same as the traffic and the and Nissan, um, Nissan Prime Star Renault traffic 2.5. Um, 2005 model. Cool, okay, cheers, bye.